Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hello, my name is Caroline and I make sewing tutorials and sewing patterns to help you along your sewing journey. And for today's video, I'll be attempting to recreate the Gavin dress by Reformation. You guys voted and decided on it, so here I am once again. But to be fair, this time the votes were pretty close, so I'll also make a tutorial for the best, I promise, so stay tuned. But going back to today's tutorial, Reformation is one of my favorite brands of all time. I feel like most of you have probably heard of them or seen a piece of clothing from them at least once. And for this design, so many other brands have come up with their versions of it. I have even seen Brazilian brands do it. I'm not 100% if Reformation was the first one to come up with it, with the open back detail and all, but it was their version that I saw the most. I'd say it's kind of a staple piece. It's really chic with kind of a basic front, but the back is where the dress really shines. I'll show you the step-by-step -step process to make the pattern. The front of the dress is not complicated or anything, but we have to take some extra steps to make sure the back will work out really well. And I have actually attempted to make this dress a few years ago, maybe four years ago? I think it was before COVID, but I am not 100% sure. But back then I had no idea how to make the open back. I tried to understand through looking at the photos, but I just couldn't. And there weren't any tutorials about it online, so I kind of had to make the back differently. I'm gonna show you the old one that I made, and at the end of the video I can try them both on, and we can compare the difference between the two. Well, it was this one right here. So here it is a dress. I'd say the front is kind of very similar. It's got the same slit detail of the skirt and the neckline is very similar as well, but the back is where things start to get a little bit different. As you can see, there's a zipper from top to bottom because that was the only way that I knew how to make it. And instead of closing darts and making the back tight fitting, I didn't really sew any darts closed, so there was a little bit of ease at the back. To make the dress more comfortable, but at the same time tighter, I decided to sew elastic thread at the back. I also added some ties to help me cinch up the back, which I'm not going to add this time because I don't think they're very necessary. And I love this dress. I have worn it so many times already, even though it's not perfect by any means. I love this color and I love this print, these little tiny flowers. Prints like this are not very easy for me to find, so it's something that I always treasure when I do find them. But it's not perfect. It was made a while ago and my sewing game is way better now. As you can see, the finishes on the inside are not really the best. I didn't use a matching thread for the overlocker because I was kind of too lazy to change it. The invisible zipper is not quite invisible, it's still showing. And once I try it on, you guys will see that the armhole opening is a little bit too low, so it kind of shows too much of my underarm area and I don't like that very much. For this new one that I'm about to make, I plan on finishing everything with either front seams or bias binding. It will take way longer to do it like that than it will take to finish everything up with an overlocker. But I'm kind of going towards this vibe now, trying to make everything with the most care possible so they last forever because it already takes so long to make a garment. So um, I just want to try my best to make it the best possible that I can now. Back when I started sewing, I didn't even finish my seams inside at all. Wait, let me get something real quick. Here is the very first piece of clothing I have ever sewn in my life. It's a very simple top I made following Anika's tutorial on YouTube. I'm gonna try to see if I can still find the video and if I do, I'm going to put it in the description because it's quite old. As you can see, not one single finish on the inside. <laughs> Everything is fraying really bad. I remember when I made this, I was so proud of it. I wore it everywhere and I would always tell people, hey, I actually made this top. It's probably been seven years since I made this, maybe. Time flies. But my point is, the insides don't look very nice after washing, right? This is why you should always finish your seams. Even if you're a beginner, because later on, you're going to pick up something that you made years back and you're going to think, oh my God, I wish I had finished it so it doesn't start unraveling and ripping apart. And the time that I spend making it is gonna go to waste. So finish your seams. So we can have garments that last and we can improve. Well, continuing into the improvement topic, I'd like to take a moment to talk about today's sponsor, 
Skillshare. Skillshare is the largest online learning platform for creatives with thousands of classes to choose from led by industry experts. And it's a great place for you to learn almost anything you like, like photography, video editing, illustration, productivity, and so much more. And to be honest, all of those topics are really interesting to me. But one thing that I've decided to try and learn for real is portrait drawing. So I started taking Chris Hong's classes. She's an artist and a YouTuber that I really like. I simply love her style. I'm currently taking her Steps to Creating Vivid Portraits with Colored Pencils class. Haven't gotten to the coloring part yet, but I feel like I have improved a lot in my drawings already. Let me show you. I even got a new sketchbook. These two right here, I made following her step-by-step -step tutorials on her class. I learned how to do the shading and how to work with shadows because I really didn't really know how to do that before. And these two right here, I was just having a little bit of fun. As you can see, it's pretty clear that I did that before taking the colored pencils part of the class. If you can recognize these two though, let me know in the comments who do you think they are because if you get them right, Let's be friends. And if you'd like to join me and start learning or perfecting a new skill, the first 500 people to use my link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. And I'll also leave a link to Chris's classes and her YouTube channel in the description if you'd like to get to know her and to learn how to draw portraits as well. And now let's go to pattern making. I have already made the pattern on my computer so I could test it out. And to be honest, the back was a little bit Difficult for me to get it right, but after a while, I think I got it. This avatar here has my own body measurements. So this is the front. As you can see, there's like one slit here. This is the back. And the problem that I was having was with the gaping on this part. It's still gaping a little, but I think it's going to be fine. It's just because I didn't really account for the button that's going to be placed here. We'll see, but I think it's going to be fine. And now I'm going to take all the steps that I took on my computer and I'm going to recreate it on paper so it's easier for you to follow along. And for this pattern, um, you will need a basic bodice block. And I do have a tutorial here on my channel where I show you how to make a basic bodice block using your own body measurements. I'm going to link it in the description. You're going to need that. And preferably, you would also need a basic sleeve block for this. And I also have a tutorial for this on my channel. So both of those links will be in the description. And this one might seem a little bit challenging. Um, the back does have a little bit of tweaks that you have to make to fit your body perfectly. The tweaks that I'm going to show you were the ones that worked for my body. But if your body looks a little bit different from mine, you might have to take in a little bit more or a little bit less. So I highly recommend you testing it out and making a trial on a cheaper fabric so you know for sure that it's going to fit you and if it's still gaping or anything you can just stick it in on the fabric and then transfer that to the paper but once you get it right you can just make it as many as you want so for the front i just traced the basic bodice block and there aren't as many modifications that we need to make for the front because it's a very simple neckline and design the one from reformation actually has a side dart so for that we have to transfer this shoulder dart here to the side and just so it doesn't end up being right at the apex because otherwise it can end up being a little bit pointy i measured here from the side two centimeters and from the armhole opening I measured down three centimeters and now I'll connect those two points with a line and this will be our new dart line and to transfer it from the shoulder all the way to here we just have to fold this and now the shoulder dart has been transferred here and you can do the exact same thing to the bottom if you want you can just fold it here and transfer the waist dart to the side as well. So you only have to sew one dart later. It's totally up to you. I would just recommend making this a straight line here. So the bottom doesn't end up getting crooked. But if you have a really big cup size, um, this dart right here will also end up being wider to accommodate your breast better. So if that's the case for you, I would actually recommend keeping the waist and the side dart so you can sew them both separately and it's not super bulky only in one place. But if you do decide to keep the waist dart as well, I would also recommend lowering a little bit because this is the apex of the breast. So if both darts end up right at the apex, it's going to end up looking a little bit pointy and it's not gonna look really good. So I recommend, as I said here, measuring two and a half centimeters to the side, like one inch to the side and one inch down as well. And then retracing the waist dart following the new line. And the neckline of the bodice is actually very simple as well. It's 
very high around your neck. I lowered one centimeter here so I can just retrace it and it doesn't end up being too tight. And this is the front and I just need to add seam allowance all around but minus this part because this will be placed on fold of the fabric. So we have a mirrored one piece at the front. Now the back is a little bit more challenging. It took me a few trials on my computer to be able to make it fit without gaping. So I would recommend after you make this to try it out on your body. So from the size, I marked two centimeters. Um, if your size is bigger than mine, then maybe you would rather add a little bit more than just two because this will be the only part of the top back bodies that will be sewn to the skirt. So maybe you would want to add more than just two. And I entered half centimeter here because this will be tied or with a button. So I entered half centimeter here. And when I made it on my computer using the base, the 34 base, I used 18 centimeters to lower here, which 18 would be here. But the angle looks completely different on my basic bodice block using my own body measurements because my torso is longer. So for this, I'm going to add a little bit to it, but for the base, I used 18 centimeters. So if you don't have a longer torso, then 18 would probably be good for you but for me I use 22 and I'll connect it to the waist mark that we made so if this is all that we do and we just consider this as the back pattern there will be a lot of gaping around this area our backs are not straight we do have a curve on the back so we have to take in from this so just taking in the original dart was not enough when I tried on on my avatar on my computer in the end I ended up making a five centimeter dart um, here at the back. So from the center point of the dart, I'm going to measure two and a half centimeters to each side. And I'll connect it to the armhole just so we can eliminate the start by folding. I fold this to here. I'm going to cut it off just so it's better. It doesn't keep folding just a second. And now I'll retrace this line. And we're gonna have to take in from this part as well because if we don't do that, it's also going to keep gaping. So I'm going to measure the, around the middle here. And I'll make the dart three centimeters wide. So I'm marking one and a half centimeters to each side. And I'll also connect it to the armhole. I also marked half centimeter to here because we'll also put a button or a tie. And I'll connect it from here all the way to the top. So here we have the two darts. We don't have to consider them when we're cutting on the fabric. This would be the final pattern. And when I made it on my computer, I repeated the same curve that the original back armhole opening had because the darts ended up deforming it a little bit. I kept the same curve because it felt like the right thing to do. So I would recommend retracing it on another piece of paper and keeping the original armhole. And for this, we would add seam allowance all around because we're gonna finish this part right here with bias binding. So for the sleeves, we're going to make cap sleeves. They're very short, so I will measure nine centimeters from the top, right at the center, and four centimeters at the sides. And I'm gonna connect it with a curve. This part right here, which is where it's going to end up around your armhole, ends up being a little bit too wide. So the sleeves are a little bit flappy and too wide. Instead of using the basic sleeve block, you could also draft another sleeve that is higher, like the cap up sleeve is higher and narrower, but you could also try to do it the way that I'm going to show you which is I measured loosely around my bicep and it's around 23 centimeters wide. I'm gonna round up for to 24 and I'm going to measure around the curve roughly 24 centimeters just so I know how loose this would be around my bicep. So I measured it around here. This is the width of my bicep and this is around how much would be left, which is seven centimeters to each side, so 14 in total. And I'll just take it in by overlapping them like this and the shape of the sleeve is going to change a little bit but make sure you're overlapping them equally to each side so it's not twisted i could have just cut here instead but this will work too i overlapped here and i took in a total of four centimeters two to each side i remeasured it and 
this is how much my bicep would cover. I'm just going to take in a little bit at the side of the sleeve, like this. So this is the final shape of the sleeve. This is where our bicep would end, and this is the ease that we're gonna have around our arm. And I'm also going to trim this little point here, so it's not weird. And now you just need to add seam allowance all around the sleeve, on all sides of the sleeve. If you want, you can also make the top part a little bit wider, so you can gather a little bit, and there is a little gathering detail at the top, but I'm going to leave it as it is. And this is the front. Don't forget to mark that in the middle as well. It's going to be easier for us when we sew it to the bodice. The middle and the front. And for the skirt pattern, um, it's a basic A-line skirt with a side slit. Here at the top, you would measure your waist divided by four plus the measurement of the dart. And I recommend you just copying the bottom line of the bodice because since we're going to sew the skirt to the bodice, it's going to have the exact same measurement. And I also extended the central waist dart here, which is this line right here, all the way to the hem. And for the vertical measurements, so here's the waist. From the waist point all the way to the hem, you're going to measure how long you want your skirt to be. And from your waist all the way to the hip line, we're going to measure your hip height, which is the vertical distance between the smallest part of your waist and the widest part of your hips. You're going to measure that on your own body. If I'm not mistaken, mine is 22 centimeters. And from that line, which is called the hip line, we're going to measure our hips divided by four plus one centimeter of ease. And also at the hem line, we just draw a straight line down. So from here to here, we also have the hips divided by four plus one. And this measurement right here is how much we want the skirt to be flared out. In my case, I decided to use 15 centimeters. And to finish it off, um, I decided to lower one and a half centimeters here at the center seam and connect it with the slack curve to the side. This is just so it fits our body better because of the curve that we have. And the front and the back patterns are basically made the same way. The only difference is how you would want to sew them off. Um, I have decided that I will keep the back panel as one and I will just sew the dart close for the back. But the front has a side slit, so we cannot just have it all be one panel. We're gonna have to separate this as the center front and this as the side front. And we're gonna sew them together, but leave a space without sewing so this can act as the slit. So that is the only difference, but if you don't really mind not having a slit, you can also just close the dart, so. And there will be a back zipper, so in the back, you would have to add one centimeter seam allowance for the zipper here at the center. And for the front, we're gonna cut this part on the fold. I have printed all the pattern pieces already and I'm gonna glue them all together and then I'm going to give you more detail about all the seam allowance and all that. Once I have them all settled, I'm going to show you how you can place the pattern pieces on the fabric. So as you can see, the center front skirt is placed on top of the fold of the fabric and I added seam allowance here in the middle. Because we're going to sew those two panels together up until where we want the slit to be. But the back panel of the skirt is not separated into two. I chose to do that, so I'm just going to close the dart later. And instead of placing it on top of the fold, I added one centimeter seam allowance here because this is where we're going to place the zipper later on. And for the top, just so you don't get confused, I flipped the fold of the fabric to the other side. This way I could place this pattern piece right on the left over there and have it facing upwards, but the fold is here. And I added seam allowance all around, minus at the fold mark. And for the back, there's seam allowance all around. And I still have a lot of space to cut off the bias binding pieces because this part will be finished with bias binding and the neckline will also be finished with bias binding so I have more than enough here to cut a lot of bias binding. And as you can see I have cut all of the pieces now but you might be confused, why did you leave this extra seam allowance at the sides and at the shoulder seam? Instead of using an overlocker or a zigzag stitch to finish it, I decided to try and finish the shoulders and the sides with French seams and then the armholes and necklines and everything else with bias binding so it looks very very well finished on the inside. You don't have to do that. If you don't want to finish the sides with French seams, you can just add the normal 1cm seam allowance and then finish it off with um, an overlocker. But I kind of 
feel like it's going to look so much better if I try to do that. To start it off, we have to first close all of the darts. There are six in total, there are four on the bodice, and there are two in the back skirt. So what I'm going to do is I will transfer the lines to the inside of the pattern to the wrong side, and then I'm going to sew them close. I have already folded the dart in the middle, as you can see here, and now I'm going to sew it from top to bottom. And when you get towards the end of the dart, don't backstitch, just finish the sewing as usual like this. Leave a tail that we're going to tie later. Now I'm going to iron them so they settle better. So remember what I said about sewing the entire dress with French seams whenever I can? Um, instead of placing the back bodice towards the front bodice with their right sides facing each other, which is what we usually do, and if you don't plan on sewing it with French seams, that's what you're supposed to do as well. Instead of placing them right sides together, I place them wrong sides together. And I'm going to sew it like this at the shoulders and at the sides as well. Now I'll trim the seam in the middle. It's gonna be hard for you to see because it's black thread within black fabric. And after trimming it, we just have to turn it wrong sides together, iron the seam. And now that they're right sides together, we just have to stitch it here to enclosure the last seam inside of it. And this is how the seam turned out to be. Everything is really well finished here. And on the outside, the seam looks really clean as well. And now I'll do the exact same thing to the side of the bodice. I'll sew them wrong sides together with French seams. But if you don't want to use French seams, you can just sew them as usual. And now that the base of the bodice is ready, I have sewn the front and back panels together. I'm gonna set it aside so we can start working on the skirt. So these are the front skirt panels, this is the center front, and those are the side front panels. And we're gonna sew them right sides together. And when I cut them, I actually left an extra seam allowance here so I can just fold it instead of finishing it with an overlocker. As you can see here, I actually folded it. This is gonna help it finish really well later, but Again, you could just finish it with an overlocker because that will act like a hem. And as you can see here, we have the shape of the dart that we cut away. And now I just have to place them right sides together and sew. However, one of the sides we're going to sew all the way from top to bottom and the other side we're going to sew from the top all the way to where you want your slit to start. So I would actually recommend you measuring from your waist all the way to where you want your slit to be. I sew them both, as you can see, and after I sew them, I iron the seam open and I top stitched all the way from top to bottom, kind of like making a hem. And as you can see at the side of the slit, I made the same thing, but since we only sew it up until here, the rest is going to be open. And because I had hemmed this part beforehand, it looks very clean. This is great if you don't have an overlocker and you would rather have a really good looking seam on the inside. You can just do that, fold it twice inside. And if you'd like a reference, this part right here that I sewed is 34 centimeters long. So you can kind of check it out on my body and see what you think. But remember that I'm pretty tall, so maybe for you, this would be a little bit longer than it would be on me. And now to sew the skirt panels together, the front to the back, I'm going to place them wrong sides together again because I will once again finish it with a French seam. But if you don't want to use a French seam to finish it, you can just place them right sides together like we usually do. So place the pretty side facing upwards and the pretty side facing down. But I'm going to do with the pretty side facing outwards like this. And now we just sew it from top all the way to the bottom at the sides. It's day two now. I don't remember exactly where I left off. Um, I think it was with the skirt, but I did a few things off camera, so I'm going to update you now. I think I showed up until the sewing of the sides of the skirt, but off camera, I also added the zipper to the center back seam. I don't know if you can see. So the skirt is almost ready. All there's left to do is hem the bottom of the skirt and also 
finish the top that we're going to do that with bias binding but I can only finish the top of the skirt after we have already attached the bodice to it so we're gonna have to go back to the top now for the bodice this is what we have so far we have sewn the front and the back together so the shell is basically ready and now we have to sew the sleeves to the bodice um, I already did some parts of it off camera all I did was I just sewed the sleeves here like the sides of the sleeves together as you can see here the sleeves are already sewn with a front seam but you don't have to sew with the front seam if you don't want to and i also made a very thin double hem at the bottom and now i'm going to show you how you can attach the sleeves to the bodice so before doing anything to the sleeve i actually transferred those marks this is the middle of the sleeve and this is the front i made a really small cut to transfer the mark to the fabric. I have sewn one of them already. Now it's time for the second one. Before anything, I'm going to run a basting stitch right at the top part of the cap sleeve. It's going to be a little bit hard to see because it's black, but the fabric naturally gathered already. I put it on the longest stitch length that my machine has, which is four, and I didn't backstitch in the beginning or the end. And now I'm going to match right sides together the underarm seam of the sleeve to the underarm seam of the bodice so this is the front of the bodice and this is the back here we have the shoulder seam and here we have the underarm seam i'm going to turn it wrong size out and i'm going to make sure that the front part that i marked before is going towards the front and the back is going towards the back and i'm going to place the right sides together inside of the bodice with the little cut that we made that represents the middle of the sleeve matching right with the shoulder seam. So the shoulder seam, the little cut that I made is right here. I'm going to place the little cut right on top of the shoulder seam. I'll pin it. The sleeve is inside right now. I'm going to pin the bottom where there's the underarm seam to the underarm seam of the bodice as well. And now I will pin the rest from the underarm all the way to the shoulder seam. I'll make sure to pin it straight across without gathering anything at the bottom. And if there's any leftover of the sleeve, I will just gather it around the top part that is closer to the shoulder seam. As you can see, there's a little bit leftover, so I'm going to gather this part. And it's just to make it ease into it. It's not going to actually give that puffy gathered effect at all because it's not enough of a difference for that. Just to make it fit with the exact measurement. Now, as you can see, the sleeve is all pinned inside and all you have to do is sew all around the opening of the armhole. And this inside seam that is not finished, you can overlock it, but I'm going to finish later with bias binding. Speaking of bias binding, this is the next step. We're going to have to finish the neckline and this part right here with bias binding, because if we just fold it inside, there's a very high chance that it's going to look twisted. For that, you can use store-bought bias binding, but I actually cut it on the fabric so it can match. You just have to cut your strips of fabric on a 45 degree angle, because that way, it gets stretchy and it's able to sew around curves. I cut mine around four centimeters wide, a little bit less than two inches, and I folded it in the middle and I ironed it like this. I'm going to start with the neckline. I'm going to pin it all across the neckline. This is where the start of the back line is, so we're going to sew all across here. I'm going to place the open side of the bias binding towards the opening of the neckline, so here, like this. I hope we can see it and I'm going to sew it now one centimeter away from the edge. Now I'm going to trim the seam allowance in the middle. And now that it's trimmed, I'm going to pick the bias binding and turn it to the wrong side. And I'll top stitch it. I went ahead and I also finished the angled part of the back and the sleeve seam with bias binding. And now the only part that we have to finish is this one right here. But before we sew the bias binding to this part, we actually have to attach a little bit of elastic to one of the sides because the other side will have the button at the top and at the bottom. So we need to put elastic here before we sew the bias binding. So here I have two options of elastic that I can use for this. 
The first one is just use elastic thread, but it's really thin and it stretches out way too much. So I'm actually like afraid that it's not gonna work out because the button will end up escaping this because it's not super secure. And the other option is a little bit too thick, I think, and doesn't stretch as much. Ideally, it would be kind of a middle ground between both, but those are the only options that I have. So I think I'm gonna go with the thicker one and hope for the best. So I cut two strips of the elastic that doesn't stretch as much. And I'm going to place it right on top of the center back. I'll place one right here at the top, right on top of the bias binding, and one right at the bottom, also on top of the bias binding. I'll be folding it in the middle. It's black on black, so it's gonna be kind of hard to see. But I'm gonna place one here. Oops. I'm just gonna sew it straight on the machine, on top and at the bottom. It was a bit difficult, I'm not gonna lie. And now that it's here, we just have to finish it with the bias binding the same way that we did to the neckline and to the other parts. I have sewn it here and I also trimmed the seam allowance in the middle. And the only part that we have to do differently on this one is that we have to finish the top and the bottom of the bias binding as well. So instead of just folding inwards like we did with the others, we're also going to fold it down and then fold it inwards like this. So the top here is going to be really well finished. Ta-da! It's looking really pretty on the inside. After I finish attaching the buttons here and I try it on, but now we have to sew the bodice to the skirt. I picked up the bodice piece and I placed it right sides together in the middle and I made a small little cut right at the middle of the waistline of the top. And I did the same thing to the center front of the skirt so I can know exactly where both of the middles are. And I'm going to place the top matching the little cuts that I made right sides together. This is the bottom of the top. If you cut and sew everything properly, the top waist start is going to match perfectly with the, the seam of the skirt right here. And we'll pin it up until the edge of the top. There was only two centimeters at the bottom of the back top, so we're going to pin it up until here. And the rest later, we're going to finish with bias binding. But the skirt is here and the bodice is placed on top of the skirt. And I'm going to sew it here one centimeter away from the edge. So what did you guys think about the dress? I am honestly very happy with the way that it turned out. Not only the pattern making this time was like really well fitting and I really liked like the fit of the dress overall, but I think the finishes on the inside were like the cherry on top. And here I am trying the older version on. I also like this dress a lot, but there's a little problem that I told you about, about the underarm being a little bit too low and that bothering me a little bit. And the neckline is also a little bit too open comparing to the new one. And of course, the back looks nothing like it, but I still like this one too. And I also hope that you guys liked today's tutorial. If you did, please don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I hope to see you guys around next time as well. Bye!